Uh, in regards to Israel itself, in light of uh, the recent election there, what's your assessment of this new coalition that's been put together, especially in terms of its ideological inconsistencies, which are, are apparent? Well, uh, I must tell you, I am extremely disappointed with the new coalition. And I asked myself, okay, so what else is new? And in my recent article, basically, I'm saying, so here we go again. We have a very conservative government. We've seen Prime Minister Netanyahu in action for the last four years. If he prides himself on anything, is the expansion of the settlements and building new ones, which is, in my view, nothing short of kiss of death to the whole concept of a two-state solution. So now you have a new government. Interestingly enough, the Ministry of Housing was given to a new party called the Jewish Home, who openly and clearly stated that they have the intention, the desire, and the plan to annex Area C. Now, Area C uh, comprises of 60% of the West Bank. Just imagine if uh, this new government allow this to happen. That pretty much is going to end the peace process in any form or fashion. So, this government is unfortunately uh, not going to go anywhere with the peace process, even though, mind you, you have two other parties in this coalition, the uh, Yash Atid, uh, that led by Lapid, and uh, Hatnoa, which led by Tsipi Livni. These are center and left of center. But they do not have this way and the numbers to be able to, to exert the kind of influence needed to change the direction of the Likud party and the uh, Jewish home led by Netanyahu and, and, and Naftali Bennett. So because of that gap between these coalition parties, how do you expect them to approach either domestic or foreign policy issues? Do you expect a worsening of the situation or any kind of significant change or more just the status quo as it is? Well, there's a, I think there's a big difference between domestic issues and, and foreign relations if you focus, say, on uh, relations with the rest of the world or the United States in particular. Domestically, I think they'll pay attention to domestic issues because, as you well know, domestic matters often drive foreign policy. And so Lapid is committed to bread and butter issue. And so, Netanyahu gave him the opportunity, the ministry that is going to deal with these issues. There's no doubt in my mind that issues related to domestic concern will be dealt with much more effectively than in the prior um, government, albeit it still was led by Netanyahu. As far as foreign policy is concerned, this is a different question. Israel is becoming increasingly more isolated and almost entrenched with the United States itself. Because the international community, unanimously, with no exception, feel very strongly that Israel, at this juncture, is on the wrong side of history. The occupation of Palestinian territory is not sustainable. The expansion of the settlement basically reduces the prospect of a state of two-state solution. The continuation of conflict, the hatred, the animosity between the two sides continue to chip away in the bilateral relations between the two sides. So, so what you have here now, Israel's position uh, in the eyes of the international community is as such this growing sympathy for the Palestinians, reduce our sympathy for the Israelis. Israel is becoming more and more, uh, you know, put itself in a prison, so to speak, building fences around it, rather than uh, reaching out to the Arab world. And it's becoming a garrison state. And this is what's taking place. So the international community, specifically the European, mind you, is bewildered as to why Israel is have chosen this path 
that it simply at best will lead nowhere and at worst could lead to a disaster.